Hey, welcome to another episode of Brand Mavericks, the podcast that ignites your entrepreneurial spirit and guides you on the path to building your own franchise empire. I'm Neil DiPentino. I'm the president of Titan Media Works and your host for today's show. Uh, today, my guest is Dick Wren. He is the director of franchise development for Ivy Kids, a pioneering name in early uh, childhood education. Uh, Dick leads the charge for franchise development, guiding candidates through the extensive education process. Let's unravel the insights behind Ivy Kids in the franchise world. Please join me in welcoming Dick Wren. Hey, Dick, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Neil, thank you. Uh, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, absolutely. 100%. I mean, we've had really a cool conversation before we started the recording. Um, mm -hmm. You and I have very similar backgrounds. We have very similar, we've actually kind of followed each other around the country, which has been kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, uh, but uh, no, it's been kind of interesting. And I've learned a lot about you. But you know what, I think uh, our audience would like to know a little bit about you as well. So tell us a little bit, a bit about who Dick Wren is. Yeah, sure. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on and, and being able to talk a little bit about franchising. And I, I've had the fortunate, I guess, blessing to be able to be in this world for a really long time and got started at a, at a young age, which, you know, in today's world is, is it's very viable, right? You, you can get into franchising at a young age. I was 26 when I, when I, when I bought my first franchise, uh, with, uh, my, uh, to my brother and one other, two other business partners. And we, we opened the 13th location uh, for a Quiznos sub back then. It was actually called Quiznos Classic Sandwiches. A lot of uh, evolution of that name as we went through the process. And, you know, we eventually opened three more locations. Uh, we became a multi-unit franchise owner. Uh, and I was the operating partner, did that for about 10 years. And then um, at that point in time, Quiznos was starting to, explode nationally and try to do this growth program through something called area directorships where they would sell off territories uh, typically defined by demographic marketing areas, DMAs. And uh, there was a gentleman who owned the Raleigh-Durham demographic marketing area. I was located back in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, he had a partner that uh, went south on him and I got introduced to them and eventually moved to North Carolina and uh, took uh, one location that we owned uh, and eventually opened up 67 more. We had 68 at one time. Uh, and we were fully responsible for all aspects of the franchising side of it. So we led, uh, actually I was a one arm paper holder, so to speak. I, I did uh, franchise development and I did uh, operational support. I had to start learning and understanding and did all real estate. We did all design, construction, and construction management for our franchise owners. And then we did all operational support for them. So the first several years were just very lean and mean, and you just dug in and, and got after it. And we eventually started to grow our business business and build the business. And then subsequently uh, have been able to do that for two other brands. And then uh, all those companies were either acquired or sold. And now I'm at out actually helping people grow their businesses. So I, I had been in the automotive world um, and now I'm in early childhood education development and it's it's been an interesting journey, so to speak. So so what, what uh, inspired you to get involved with early education? Sure, uh, great question. I, I, I had had earlier last year was uh, had got let go because of some restructuring at, at a former organization and was really trying to look for some type of industry slash and company uh, where I felt I could, I could help them bring some knowledge um, and experience to help them grow. And a recruiter actually introduced me to Ivy kids and said, well, what do you think about this? And so I went through uh, a couple, about a week and a half of just research not only on the company, but on the industry and decided to, yeah, hey, this is something that I really would enjoy and I would love to learn more about the company. And so through a series of interviews and other opportunities, I, you know, they were offered me the position to come help them grow their business. And I've been with them for about, well, it's been about eight, eight nine months now. And it's been really, it's super exciting. And 
and very, very educational, you know, in the education industry. But <laughs> I mean, I've learned a lot. And, and that's that's something that I, I really enjoy doing is continuing to learn. And mm. if, you know, if you can learn something new every day, it's been a good day. Right. So um, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. Really good, so. And that's kind of what Ivy Kids is all about is helping children actually to learn and continue to learn. Uh, interesting concept. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what Ivy Kids is all about? Yeah. So I, Ivy Kids, we fall in that early childhood education development industry. Uh, and, and you know, I think some people really maybe think of it maybe as a daycare, but it really is not a daycare. It, it is about education, uh, children first. Uh, the kids are always thought about in terms of every decision that that our company makes. It's always about, you know, how is this going to impact the child? How is this something that is going to make their life better or safer? Uh, anything along those lines. And so, uh, you know, we, we've we got, uh, we're a small franchise. Uh, they started back in 2003 when they opened their first corporate location. They subsequently opened four more. And now we have 17 open centers, five of which are our corporate owned locations, but we have another 12 that are under development. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting time to be in the industry and in with Ivy kids. Well, fantastic. So Ivy kids is really, so when I was doing a little bit of research, I was looking about the activity boxes that you all send out, uh, you know, subscriptions, those type of things, but really you're, you actually have centers that uh, kids can come and learn. Uh, is that what you're telling me? Yes. Yeah, see, so uh, we have, we have, uh, I, I would say a couple of unique, um, differentiators potentially out there, um, in, in our world, uh, considering, you know, the industry that we fall within. And so, uh, you know, our curriculum is based upon research that was done by a professor at Harvard named Howard Garner. And, and what his research, uh, came to bear was that, uh, there's, he identified these eight different intelligences of how, everyone learns. So everyone learns in different factions. Uh, you may learn in quiet. Uh, I'm very visual learner. Um, there's interpersonal, there's uh, natural, there's holistic, there's all these different, these eight different personalities. And so uh, what we've done over the years is intertwine that research into our curriculum. And that's implemented in all of our classrooms. So I, IV Kids typically is um, from six weeks up to pre-K. And then we have a kindergarten through five-year-old program that's designed for before school and after school programs. We have 12 weeks of, of summer camps that are all designed uh, around curriculum and themes. And then we also have fall, winter, and spring camps. So, uh, you know, education is forefront. Uh, we don't smell like a daycare. We don't look like a daycare. Uh, you know, we have very, very nice looking centers uh, that are designed uh, around uh, functionality of, of being able to, to make it work for everybody involved in the business. I, I like that. You know, we um, I was just actually talking with my wife about something very similar the other day. She is a special education teacher mm -hmm. uh, and I have a background also in selling uh, educational software and, and video back in the nice. day. Uh, right. And and our sweet spot was actually the same sweet spot that you're talking about right now. And that's when you really can where, where, where kids are really they're eager to learn. And, mm -hmm. uh, but in the old days, it was all repetitive type stuff, you know, sure. uh, memorization and things like that. Right. But in my experience, I, I think kids really learn a lot more, uh, when you provide them with some kind of activity, we called it, the, the, I think the phrase that was coined back in those days was edutainment. Uh, but so it sounds very similar to sure. what you guys are doing. They're creating activities that are curriculum based type of activities. So children at, from an early age can start learning right away. Right. Oh yeah, and and, and it, it's designed a, a, around, uh, like you say, different activities. So, like we, we might, and again, Dick's not the expert on this. Dick Dick is is taking what he's learned from our our phenomenal staff, right? Our, our operations team and our training team; those are the experts, and our curriculum team; those are the experts in in, in Ivy Kids, right? Mm -hmm. And and but what I've learned is that you can take uh, a specific process of, of how to interact with a child 
uh, let's say you're working on learning even numbers. So maybe you're outside and you're asking them to pick up even number leaves and bring them to you. Uh, or maybe you're doing uh, uh, setting up a board on the wall with different, you know, even and odd numbers and throwing a football at it and, and hitting hit the even number or doing musical chairs and you can only sit down with a number that's even. So it, it's all of this intertwined education to help that child learn and think differently than just there's no flat. We don't have flashcards, right? We, we just don't. Right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Well, I use flashcards to learn how to do podcasting, but other than that, we don't use them anymore here either. But, uh, <laughs> so let's talk a little right. bit about franchising. So that's that's interesting. So obviously that is your area of expertise. And I would imagine uh, that the franchise franchisee selection has got to be a pretty rigorous thing, especially when you're dealing with, with children. Can you kind of walk mm-hmm. us through what that looks like? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. You know, uh, it, the, the wonderful thing about franchising is that it, it is uh, really in simplistic terms, just following a proven business model. And, and one of the things I really like to preach to any candidate, and I have done this over the years of, of, of awarding franchises, is that if you follow the system and you, and you control the system the way that it was designed for you, then you have a, a really good opportunity to be successful at it. And it's the folks that I've seen that haven't had success at it, that maybe are too entrepreneurial or they're too analytical. Uh, so they want to overthink the system and, and the process and opposed to following the system and process. And so when we start getting in, looking at potential candidates, there, there's, uh, I, I just consider it an education process. That's my duty to anyone looking at Ivy Kids and, and anyone out there in, that's looking at a franchise should look at it that way and opposed to someone trying to sell you something because it really has mm-hmm. to be a match for both sides in the sense that, you know, the franchisor wants to grow, but you want to grow with the right partner. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. I've seen some yeah. franchises grow, not necessarily white with right partners. It was just about numbers and it was just about getting you know, signing contracts and and collecting franchise fees. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately, just it doesn't work at the end of the day. Uh, But, you know, when you walk people through an education process in terms of introducing them to our brand, telling them about some differentiators that we offer, telling them about really what our focus is from a business, our core focus business on children, on education, making them uh, you know, and you want to look for people that have that passion, similar to, you know, your wife uh, in, in uh, you know, her ventures, you know, of education, right? That That's a special person that's able to do and teach special needs. Um, but you have to have someone that has that passion uh, for education, for taking care of kids, for wanting your community to be better, you know, for, for bringing up the next generation that's, that's going to be our leaders at some point in time. And then as they go through this education process and talk about franchising and the franchise disclosure document and and how they evaluate that, and look at our numbers and our fees and our costs, and, and, and then just get them to some point at the end where we have a, we have a discovery day, other franchises have it, you know, it might be meet the team. It might be something along those lines, but you know, at the end of that process, we're going to have enough information on that candidate. And they're going to have enough information on us to decide whether we want to basically get into going to business together. And one of the unique things about Ivy Kids is that this isn't just a decision that that Dick makes or just Dick and the CEO make. It, it's a team decision. So every head of our department uh, of departments, we all get together at the end of a discovery day and we talk about those candidates that came in and we vote on them and. You know, we want them to have core values and we want them to have things that that match up with our core values and passion, et cetera. And if, if they match that, that's great. And we tell them, hey, we want you to be a part of our system. It's it's now in your in your court. And sometimes we have to tell them, you know what, we don't think this is right for you. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, sometimes people don't understand when you tell them that you just don't we don't think this is right for you. But I. You know, we'd rather we'd rather you be successful at something than come into something that maybe you may not be successful at. 
Absolutely. And I also think that, I mean, obviously you want them to be successful, but then also, mm -hmm. um, you know, having the, the right person or the wrong person or the wrong, you know, in, in involved uh, really affects everyone down line. So all the other franchisees, I mean, one uh, bad apple could spoil the whole bunch, so to say, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it can, you know, and, and it's one of those things where I, I use the crystal ball analogy that that I wish I could say every single person that I've ever awarded a franchise to or even currently do what they're going to act like, feel like and be like as a franchise owner. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes your instincts, right. And sometimes you get completely proven wrong where I've had someone where I, I don't know how they're going to do. And all of a sudden they, they just knock it out of the park. Right. Um, where others you think, oh my gosh, they're going to be wonderful. And then they get a little bit sideways in their thought process. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, it's uh, you know, if we had crystal balls, I think you and I would be maybe on a beach somewhere having a, a cold drink instead of doing this. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're probably right with that, I tell you. So from what you're telling me, what it sounds like, and I could be wrong, I, so correct me if I am wrong, but it sounds mm -hmm. like this is more of a hands-on type thing as opposed to an absentee owner type business. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That is. In fact, one of the things that we do require is that our owners are committed on a day-to-day -day basis in their centers, particularly for the first 18 to 24 months. And so as we go through that candidate research education process, we really try to understand initially, you know, who of your team, whether it's a husband, wife, or it's two couples, or it's an operating company bringing in operating partners, who's going to be involved and dedicate themselves to that day-to-day -day process. Mm -hmm. um, so absentee owners just don't work in our business model. Uh, you know, it, it's really interesting when you start talking to in a lot of the things in the franchising world is about this multi-unit operator. And we want to grow organically or or with multi-unit operators. But it's something that's we're not going to bring in that person that's going to do 25 units. It's just not going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, could you get there over the next 10 years? Maybe. But we also have a long timeline, right? We're brick and mortar, we're buying land, we're building a building. So the day you sign an agreement, you probably won't even be open for another 20 to 24 months. So that's a long time frame, and it's a long developmental cycle. Right, right. So mm -hmm. who is the perfect franchisee for you? I mean, is this a person who wants to be involved involved with uh, Ivy Kids? Do they have to have an educational a background in education or just have a passion for kids? Or I mean, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a perfect franchise owner in any system, but, uh, you know, for our system, uh, you know, if you have educational background, I think that's a benefit. I think you understand the dynamics of working with children and, and kiddos and personalities and things along those lines, although not not like a pillar of, of number one requirement. I think it's helpful. Uh, you know, I think if we were going to look at someone, someone who who has business experience, uh, uh, leading teams, building teams, uh, a good financial background, someone that can understand numbers, uh, but then someone who also has a community personality, someone who feels comfortable interacting with parents. Look, this is your children are getting dropped off, right? This is the most precious thing in the world that you as a parent drop your child off and say, okay, take care of my kid while I, I go to work. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to you have to have compassion and you have to have uh, this ability to be able to connect with people and also get involved with your community. Right. So it's not just, hey, I'm, I'm this little thing, microorganism, orgasm, organism within my um, you know community. I, I'm actually I am part of the community. And, and mm -hmm. so someone who they have to have a little bit of an outgoing personality. Uh, you know, we do a personality assessment and we work with a company that that is really cutting edge in terms of being able to identify. We've taken our top performers. We've had a whole plethora of our, our owners take the, this this uh, personality assessment and we've been able to group like, you know, our top performers and our middle performers and our lower performers. And and it's not end all be all, but it does tell you a little bit about how that person is going to be as a franchise owner. So there's varying ways that we can, we can go through the process to see if they're right for us. 
Right. Well, boy, that's a deep dive. I got to tell you, I've not heard anything like that from any other, uh, anybody else that I've interviewed. So that's awesome. So now that you've, you know, selected, uh, awarded the franchise to uh, a new owner, what type mm -hmm. of training and support do you provide them once they get rolling? That's a, that, that's, that's so vital. I, I think that that is really the blood and guts of, of any franchise organization is the ability to train and support them. And when I was looking at Ivy Kids, that was one of the things that really stuck out to me was for a franchise of this size, the, the magnitude of training and training processes that are already in place. So, you know, once somebody signs an agreement, the first thing we really need to do is, is find them a location and find them a site. So our real estate team will go to work uh, looking at locations that make sense, obviously, uh, for us. We look at sites not only from a demographic standpoint, but even more importantly, a financial standpoint. They have to work both ways, right? We have to find where we have this niche, daycare desert, so to speak, because there are a bunch of them all throughout the, the country, but then making sure that it works financially. And then the training systems, uh, you know, we have what's called just-in-time training. Again, I'm not the expert. Uh, uh, this is something I've been fortunate enough to learn from our team. Uh, but, you know, we, we have a five-day owner training uh, that's specifically designed uh, once we have a site identified. So we don't want to just bring somebody in after they sign an agreement and then fire hose them with information that, you know, they're going to need over the next 24 months. So we bring them in after we find a site. We do construction training. We have uh, training that, that, that is designed around marketing and pre-marketing and pre-enrollment. Um, it's both, di both digital and in person. Uh, as we go through the construction process, uh, we're going to start hiring our center directors and we're going to train them. We're going to uh, hire our education director and train them uh, again, digitally in person, five day training programs. Uh, I could go on for a long time, but I mean, it, the, the training and the support is is really top notch. Uh, once we open the centers, we have franchise business coaches. Uh, we have quality assurance reviews. Um, we're in the center anywhere from. Oh, gosh, um, like uh, the quality assurance, we're going to do for the first year. Our franchise business co coach will be there six times a year. So it, the support's phenomenal. The training is really, really well done. Well, fantastic. So what type of a uh, couple of questions, I guess. Uh, yeah, what sure. kind of footprint are we looking at for a center? And, mm -hmm. you know, what type of markets are really ideal to, to open a new franchise? Yeah, so we have we have two prototypical buildings. Um, all of our our older, they're not really old, but the ones that we we originally built, uh, those were fifteen thousand square feet. Uh, but what we have done is we've gone to a ten thousand square foot design, uh, really for two reasons. One, uh, the cost of the real estate and the cost of construction has really skyrocketed over the last five years. And the second mm -hmm. reason was that we actually found that we had some space in there that was really not used as much as it needed to be. And so mm -hmm. why not eliminate space that is really not used as functionally as much as it should be? And let's let's get a cost that's similar to what we are doing for the 15,000 square facility. Um, we can do that typically on about an acre, 1.2 acres, because um, we have outdoor playgrounds and things along those lines. And so, um, you know, the footprint, it, it's, you know, we have a, a, an enrollment somewhere between about 210 and 220 students at oh, wow. that at that size. Um, so it can be very functional. Um, and so, you know, we, we're, we're just, you know, we're, we're looking to, you know, in terms of growth areas, you know, that, that's a that's a great question. You know, it's something that our real estate team and our commercial real estate brokers are really good at. And, and so I, I would say... In, there's two different, obviously, areas. One is established, uh, you know, maybe urban slash suburban areas that that still need this type of of, of business, right? There, there's a there's a lack of 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 the facilities that are needed. Um, but mm -hmm. what we're really seeing is 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 growth areas. So you know, uh, particularly where you you might see uh, you know planned developments that that are that come on the books and say, Hey, we're going to build, you know, 2,500 homes and we're going to have a whole retail trade area with it. Uh, but we know it's not going to be out there for 
18 months or 24 months. So, you know, we're, we're buying land and then we're seeing all this infrastructure go. And then, you know, we place our center as that's continuing to flourish and grow. Uh, but we're also going, uh, one of our corporate centers, uh, we're opening in the Heights section of Houston, which is uh, just outside the city, right? So high densities, uh, but again, daycare desert, right? There's, there's just not enough demand, there's not enough room or there's not enough centers for the demand that's there, right? So mm -hmm. you, you have, you know, mom and dad both work. Uh, they are looking for high quality care and education for their kids. Uh, and you go look for where that is needed. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a science. It's not just throwing darts, right? Saying, hey, that'd be a great area. <laughs> it's, it, a lot of analytics go into it to, to make sure that, that, that we think we can uh, have a good successful center. Well, sounds great. Sounds very interesting. Uh, very exciting. Hey, look, we're very close to the end of our time together. And I do appreciate all the insight that you've given us. And obviously, there's a lot more information that uh, you could provide if we had like another hour or two, but uh, we don't, unfortunately. So uh, any final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. It's an honor um, that you asked me and and I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, you know, final thoughts, I think, uh, you know, franchising is just a wonderful, wonderful business and industry. And, uh, you know, I actually just finished up um, in the process of doing something called a certified franchise executive through the International Franchise Association and, and just finished a six week boot camp. And I've got a lot more things to to complete, to finish it. But it was amazing how much, uh, you know, I learned, uh, you know, even for someone who's been in the industry for 25 years and it was like, wow, I didn't know that or wow, I didn't know that. And so, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, parting words is look, you know, there's a lot of really great businesses out there. Do your research, do your homework. Uh, and, and entrepreneurship is awesome. You know, I, I was, like I said, I was very blessed at a young age to own my own business and was able to, to do that for 20 some years. And now I get the opportunity to help others grow their business. So it's really cool. So it's very, well, very, very, uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. It really has. Fantastic. Sounds great. Dick, if uh, our audience would like to get in contact with you or find out more about Ivy kids, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, thanks. Um, so my email is, uh, it's very straightforward. It's Dick at Ivy Uh, and then we do have, uh, ivykids.com, uh, www, our website. But if for franchising, if you have interest in that, it's just ivykidsfranchise.com. Um, and, you know, I'd be happy to talk to you about our business or heck, any other business. <laughs> so, well, man, I appreciate it. It was a wealth of information. We really appreciate you. You're really a cool guy. I got to tell you, though, uh, in closing here, your wife has a much cooler name than you do. So sorry. She, re but, uh, she really does. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'll throw a, I'll throw a shout out to her. Jen Wren. Uh, for sure has, has the much cooler name without a doubt. <laughs> I don't think I could find a name that would rhyme with deep and Tino, but I think that is absolutely the coolest thing in the world. So <laughs> well, congratulations for that. Yeah, absolutely. That's hey, that's our show for today. So thrilled that you could be with us. Hey, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Uh, brand Mavericks is sponsored by Titan media works, providing podcast production and guest booking services for those who want to be in the, in the podcasting space. Check us out at titanmediaworks.com. That's work spelled W O R X and check out all the other great hosts of the small business delivered network at smallbusinessdelivered.com. Until next time, uh, stay tuned for more brand mavericks coming your way and keep on building that empire. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.